Hello, my name is Carlton Matthews, and I want to thank you for participating in today's presentation. I will be sharing some of the new ideas within the field of data analytics and how we, as a technology services firm, can leverage these trends. And let me start with a story. In 2015, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, using a collection of leaked financial data from HSBC Bank in Switzerland, were given a glimpse into the closed world of international banking. This group of journalists were able to find connections between the bank and several criminal organizations. The graphic that you see on the slide shows an overview of the data that they collected. On the website, you are able to drill down by country as well as by specific clients and even see a listing of the stories that relate to the data that is found within their uh, data set. Now, I don't show you this data or this slide to be an alarmist. My intention is to show you the power of data correctly analyzed. So what does that mean for us as a company that specializes in technology services? I think that by taking advantage of three trends, we can position ourselves to meet a whole new segment of our customers' needs. It starts with understanding the technology that is changing today's computer landscape. Let's take a look at how the clouds are structured. One of the systems that powers today's modern cloud infrastructure is titled or is called the Hadoop Distributed File System. There was a time when the supercomputer ruled the land. High powered machines handling large volumes of data with millions upon millions of transactions happening, batch processing of the old mainframe era. Those days are now gone. But the process really hasn't changed and the need hasn't changed either. But what we're doing now, instead of having one single point of failure, we're now spreading the workload across multiple systems. And this is where Hadoop Distributed File System, or HDFS, comes into play. Hadoop handles your large data sets where the data itself is distributed across multiple systems and handles that data in, a, in an efficient manner. I mean, in this era where disk space is cheap, HDFS is designed to scale up as you add in new systems. As each new node is added into the cluster, Hadoop manages and pulls and stretches the data across, handles the processing in a way that data is not corrupted and that your processes have a high degree of failover. From the Apache software uh, website about Hadoop, it says, rather than rely on hardware to deliver high availability, the library itself is designed to detect and handle failures at the application level. So delivering a highly available service on top of a cluster of computers, each of which may be prone to failures. And the benefit to us as a software company is that the Apache Hadoop software library um, contain simple programming models. That means that we can build our applications to take advantage of Hadoop without really having to get bogged down in the nuts and bolts of how it's handling its data. Now that we've talked about HDFS, let's talk about one stream of data that relies on that high availability, high failover system, the realm of social media. Social media is one of the largest data repositories that exists. It's a force unto itself. With upwards of 1 billion active social media users, there are billions of data points being created daily. And with the right software tools, People are mining this data for both content providers as well as product manufacturers. In 2014, two researchers mapped the sentiment of an instant noodle company in Korea. They were able to identify the ups and the downs of public opinion for this company over the course of an entire year. 
They even compared that data against more traditional media outlets, TV and newspapers. They found that social media was actually a less volatile measurement and provided a much more uh, streamlined idea of what the public was thinking about this particular product over the course of their data set. And even more so, there are some very interesting software models being created in academia that could be expanded upon to provide tremendous value to our customers. The last trend that I want to examine is the idea of deep learning. When we look at the volumes of social media data that are coming in every day, billions upon billions of data points flying through the system, anybody trying to analyze that type of data would think they were drinking from a fire hose. So how do we analyze huge volumes of data quickly by removing the human equation? And that's where we can leverage some new research, some new emerging trends in the artificial intelligence community called deep learning. Deep learning, as taken from uh, the DeepMind website, deep learning combines the best techniques of machine learning and systems neuroscience to build powerful general purpose learning algorithms. This means taking your decision system and having it learn as it's taking in large quantities of unstructured data. Some researchers from Google were able to build a system to distinguish facial data from random clips on YouTube. They were able to then further train the system to distinguish between human and feline faces because those two things that you have large volumes of on YouTube people making video blogs and cat videos. And Google was able to build a system that was able to distinguish between the facial features of a person and a feline without explicitly building the system itself. And Google is committed to growing in this space. In 2014, they acquired artificial intelligence company DeepMind and are looking to expand their offerings. So what does this mean for our firm? I think we should shift some resources into training in HDFS. This would include not just classes, but encouraging our teams to contribute to the open source community. The Hadoop open source community has hundreds upon hundreds of developers who are working and building new software models, new software tools to work on top of HDFS. And as we continue to learn and grow and build in that space, we'll see uh, our connection and our understanding of HDFS grow. Next, I think we should start moving and getting some access to some social media data streams. We can start with Twitter because Twitter offers a public API for free. That means that there's no cost. We can actually get access to a pretty large volume of Twitter's data that comes in and we can start learning how to manipulate and how to correlate the data coming from that API. And as we do that, we can continue to research, you know, do we actually want to grab a hold of the full Twitter feed? Do we want to partner with Facebook to start looking at some of their open graph data? Do we want to talk to Tumblr or any of the other systems? And as our knowledge base grows, so will our influence within the community. And lastly, we should start and actually, we should continue to make strategic partnerships with other tech firms that are operating in this space. With the distributed nature of the data that we're talking about, no one company can hold it all. Working together, we can get a wider view of the data that is available. And I think by taking these three steps and looking at these trends, we can position ourselves to make huge gains in the coming year. Thank you.